2050, there's going to be more plastics in the ocean than fish. But that's not a problem, right? Many people don't like the taste of fish anyways. But what if I tell you that we, sitting here, actually rely more on the oceans than most of us think? Let's take some time and meditate about that. I will ask you now to concentrate on your breathing. Breathe in and out. In and out. And now, skip every second breath you would usually take. Inconvenient? Well, every second breath you take is produced in the oceans. They're therefore responsible for more than 50% of our world's oxygen. This is more than all the rainforests together. Phytoplankton, a small particle and the base of the aquatic food web, is accountable for that. So if we take out the fish, the whales that eat the plankton, there's going to be more plankton, right? And therefore more oxygen. That's not true. Because as in every ecosystem, the participants of the system are strongly connected. In fact, because of our actions, we could see a loss of 40% of the plankton that is producing our oxygen to breathe since the 1950s. So, a sea swamped with trash islands the size of Texas is not only a threat for marine animals that mistake the trash for food and they die from it, no, it is as well a major threat for us humans. Pollution of the oceans is rising and fish stocks are going down. The next big topic, overfishing. The United Nations says that 30% of our global fish stocks are already overexploited, which means they cannot reproduce sufficient anymore. They are about to extinct. 60% of the global fish stocks are fully exploited, and only 10% are considered in a healthy state. The World Ocean Review even speaks of 56% that are already overexploited. And on top of that, there's global warming, which we still have to discuss in 2017, which leads to rise of the temperature in the water. And as well, there's the so-called oceanic acidification, which means the largest CO2 reservoir on this planet, which are the oceans, are overexhausted and the pH level is sinking. The oceans are dying because of pollution, overfishing, and global warming. All human cost. So the more I learned about the state of our oceans, the more I knew that I had to do something about it. And I became an ocean conservationist. But as well, I'm an engineer. And what do engineers do? They solve problems. So doing my research 
on what is done to protect our oceans, I came to the conclusion there definitely has to be more investment into maritime technology. And when I speak about maritime technology, I do not speak of engineers working on more offshore drilling, container ships, and fishing methods. I'm speaking of engineers with an environmental background that are passionate and that want to do something for the conservation of the oceans. But where to start? Because of my work experience in educational robotics, I knew that it is possible to inspire young people using robotics. It is interdisciplinary. You're learning to program, you're doing mechanical constructions, and you're using electronic parts. But also, you experience social skills, teamwork, documentation, and presenting in front of an audience. And since I knew I can't save the oceans on my own, I had the idea to use the network I already had to do something about it. So I started working on an underwater robotics kit that should be low cost, easy to use, and in a do-it-yourself manner. And building robots is actually quite easy. You just need a controller, which is the brain of the robot. You need motors, actuators to make it move, and sensors to enable interaction with the environment. And all those components are already included in educational robotics kits. I use the Hedgehog controller, which is simple for beginners and powerful for pros, and it is perfectly suitable with motors and sensors for model making. So I had all the tools I needed to create a robot, I just had to pack it into an underwater housing. I also wanted to follow a keep it simple, stupid principle, the KISS principle. For example, to change the buoyancy of the robot to dive, I used syringes that suck in water, so very simple pro um, principle. And in times of 3D printing becoming more popular, I just had the idea, I want to provide 3D models that can, you can download and print your robot at home. So after months of calculating and constructing, I came up with the first prototype of what I call the Submarine Hydrodynamic Autonomous Robotics Kit, Shark. It is named in honor of one of the most important and most endangered species at the same time. And this was the first prototype. When I tested it, I came to the conclusion that unfortunately 3D prints are not really waterproof. So I exchanged the housing for standardized sewer pipes. And there it is. The current version. The current version of my robot. It is simple, it is low cost, it is in a do it yourself manner. And basically, everyone can build it at home and use it. Because of the hatcher controller I used, you don't even need to be able to program. You can, you can program it with Python if you want to, if you're an advanced user. But there's also Blockly environment included, which is a visual programming environment. So much in theory, it actually had to be tested in the field as well. So in 2016, at the European Conference on Educational Robotics, I started an underwater competition there were three teams participating, students from the age 14 to 17. They had to dive for treasures without destroying coral reefs and, as well, paying attention not to be caught in the fisher's net. 
At the time, the robot actually didn't work perfectly, so the most amazing thing to see, basically, was three teams from different nations coming together and working to fix my robot. <laughs> in 2017, in April this year, I had the second underwater tournament, this time with a new version of the robot, so it was waterproof. The competition tasks were collecting floating waste, avoiding an oil spill, coral propagation, and bringing the collected waste to a collection point. It's all symbolically, of course. But as you can imagine, having a pool at a robotics conference is really creating attention. And that's what happened. I was basically busy telling the people all the time about my intentions, about why I do underwater robotics, and about the state of the oceans as well. So the first step of my mission actually was accomplished. But what about the students? Could I really motivate them to work in the field of maritime technology? Well, immediately after the tournament, they asked me if there will be a tournament next year, they asked me for the competition task, and they definitely want to have the robot at home. But could I also inspire them to work in the conservation of the oceans? Uh, that's a hard question to answer. I can just tell you that they definitely know more about the state of the oceans than it is included in any school curriculum. And they know that there are engineers required to work on solutions. But as it is with every idea, it needs a movement to be widely spread. Start underwater robotics competition on your own. You can do it. All the components, the parts you need are available, open source, open hardware, on my website. You can use the forum to discuss problems, to discuss your ideas, and expand our community knowledge. And who knows? Maybe here, in this audience, there's a person sitting that will find out a way to filter microplastics out of the oceans. Nobel Prize guaranteed. Or maybe one of you could work on control systems to effectively shut down IUU fisheries, which means illegal, undocumented and unreported fishing, and other poacher activities, which are the main problem we have and we're, focusing, we're facing today in the oceans. But also, you could use maritime technology to work on systems and can predict tsunamis earlier, so you can create a safe zone for people living in coast regions. And speaking about safety, we definitely need non-destructive shark barriers to finally take mankind's fear of these animals and stop the useless slaughter of them. So you see, there's endless issues that need to be solved. We just need to start caring about our planet again. The oceans actually cover 70% of the Earth's surface. They are the source of all life. And they're the home of an incredible biodiversity. If just a few recollect that knowledge, we can make a change. And as it is with every major change in history, it has been achieved by a small group of people. So let's start now and take back our oceans. Thank you.